Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well. So today I'm going to be working on some tote bags and I get a few comments just saying that people really love watching along when I make things or how to make things. So I'm going to try and show you as best I can how I make these bags. Tote bags were actually the first thing I taught myself how to sew in like year six or something. So I've always loved making bags like this. Um, I remember making a bag for my year seven tutor and she somehow managed to be my tutor until I was in sixth form and she still had the bag the whole time, which I thought was so cute. Yeah, I've got two different fabrics that I'm working with, um, both cotton. If you can hear a growling. I'm trying to multitask with a flurry and talking to the camera. Hey. So yeah, I'm making tote bags today. I'm also popping out to do a bit of shopping, food shopping at some point, so um, I won't be spending the whole day on this. Um, it's currently really sunny outside, which is so nice. If you're wondering where this dress is from, I found it in the M&S sale the other day for £15. Um, but it was actually a size 16, and so this morning I just took in the sleeves um, because they were quite large on my arms. But anyway, let me get on and show you guys how I make these tote bags. I just thought I'd add this little clip in because it's now actually the next day and I filmed quite a bit yesterday but I didn't actually show you what the bag is going to look like when it's finished. So I thought I would do that now in case you're interested and want to know how to make it. So this is the shape of the bag, it's an oversized tote bag. I went off the size of one I use all the time um, but that one was portrait and this one is like more of a landscape bag and then we've got a big pocket on the front which will have my label stitched in at the side and at the top I have two little straps and then two longer straps and then we've also got a little tie over the top to keep things inside the bag. So yeah I just thought I'd show you what the end result is going to be. It won't be in this colour obviously this is just a toile and then this is my master pattern which might not be the easiest thing to understand in a video but you've basically just got one really big rectangle and the extra bit that you fold down and then I add seam allowance to everything and then I gave the same width to the bottom and the side sections that get stitched all around making it into a box and then we have the front pocket just on there with that turnover of three centimeters and then this is the inside pocket pattern and then finally I have the strap length which is eight centimeters wide and I don't add seam allowance to that I think this would be a great one if you wanted to start pattern cutting yourself or get into the swing of things so I have all of the pattern pieces kind of folded up because I've started making the bags um, so I'll show you the fabrics that I'm going to make them in first because it's so sunny the lights not great in here right now but I have this gorgeous blue floral fabric that I'm using as one of the fabrics and so these are the front pieces of the bag and I'm sewing in my little label I had new labels printed so these ones fit just down the side of the pocket the front and then I have straps ready to go. These ones are actually going to be cut in half and are going to be held as the short mini straps. And then these are not going to stay white. These are going to be dyed a really light pink. Sorry, don't do that to my, my nice sofa. Lie down. Good girl. Yes, good girl. And then last night I ironed all of these straps. <laughs> So I'm basically making at the moment 10 of the white and 4 of the blue. But this little trick that I learned at uni literally saved me yesterday. Um, so it's quite hard to get a straight line all the time ironing, especially when you want an even fold over. I cut out this hard piece of card and I will show you with one piece. So basically the piece is longer than that bit of card or wider than that bit of card and you just sit it in the middle and iron over the top bits and then it will give you an equal turnover. I then have all the other parts that haven't been assembled yet just laid out 
over here when I was cutting them out so I had like so many bits to cut out um, so I have like 20 of these fronts and backs and then I have little pockets to go inside so those need to be constructed as well this morning um, so I'm going to work on the straps and the inner pocket this morning also while I've been sewing recently I've been watching so much Desperate Housewives of Beverly Hills um, and I'm obsessed so I'm going to get on and sew all these straps down now and then give them a good iron and they will be ready to sew on to the bag. So the straps are now all done and nice and neat. And now I'm going to work on the bags that go inside that just sort of sit along the back and you can put like your phone or keys in them. So I've just overlocked the top. These are the front of the bag and the back of the bag is a little longer so it can be sewn into the seam. So I'm just gonna start folding these over with the iron and then I will stitch down there and it will be a nice clean line and Flory has a very interesting position going on excuse the floor this is what happens when I cut out loads of fabric little bits get everywhere hey fluffles you snoozy I just wanted to show you my funny bunting of bags <laughs> I've been overlocking these I've still got the bottom to overlock but I thought it was quite funny but yeah nearly finished making little inside bags now um, just got to overlock the bottom and turn them through and iron them down and then I can move on to something else. So now I've got all of the mini bags that will just sit inside, pressed and done, ready to go in. Now I'm going to sew on the sides and the bottom and turn it into the actual bag shape and then I can go ahead and fold top down and turn it under to make a nice neat edge. So I've sewn the sides on and now I'm going to do the bottom. Um, I feel like this is just the better way round to do it. I don't know if there is a right or wrong way but I'm kind of going for like a bit of a boxy bag and I find it easier to do the sides first and then the bottom afterwards um, just seems to work better for me but just thought I'd try and let you know the sequence that I'm piecing the pieces together in okay so I've just overlocked the edges of the straps and I also chopped the long ones in half because these are going to be short straps um, so those are all ready to be sewn on and sewing these bags together took so long. I think I have like 14 bags here. But I now need to press down one centimetre at the top and then another three centimetres because that will then make the top part of the bag. Yeah. Well, at least everybody's on the dream team this time. Do you have a heart, Brandy? Yes, I see Brandy. And Lisa got a heart. Yes, my team. Good to meet you. Hello. Oh. So I've now ironed over the top. I did one turnover of one centimetre and then a three centimetre turnover. And I've just pinned in the little bag at the back. So that will just sit like that. And I just stitch down here and put yourself a little bag inside. So I'm going to go and stitch that down now. And then I can move on to stitching down the straps. I've just pinned on all of the straps so I'm going to go and sew those. I just sewed the tops down. So yeah once I've sewn this on and then I've got one more bit to go and then I can start to dye the white bags. Yay! You know it just warms my heart because that's my family. Long time no see!
Okay, I've now finished the bags, brought them outside to dye. And this is the dye I'm using. It's the Rip Dye Synthetic in the shade Sandstone, I think. I'm going to put that in with a bowl of hot water and get to dyeing. So this is what it looks like now I've dyed it. I love this colour so much. It's just so subtle and a really, really light pink. And then I just unstitched the pocket and put the label in and yeah, gave it a good press. Um, so now I've just got to finish putting the labels in all the other pink ones and make the rest of the blue floral ones. So now that the tote bags are done, I'm going to be working on some little drawstring bags. So I have two different sizes cut out. I've got some mini ones and then the large ones. And I just thought I might as well show you guys how I make these. They're super easy to make. You've just got to sort of follow a technique. So this is the pattern. Um, and I have a three centimeter turnover at the top and then another centimeter, which I fold under. So before I construct anything, I'm going to overlock the side seams and the top seam um, because that's going to be pressed under and then rolled over and stitched down and sometimes the friction of the thing inside the drawstring bag can make this part fray so that's why I'm overlocking that. So I'm going to go and overlock all of these and then I'll show you the next step. Why not? I'm already doing a kissing boot which I didn't want to do and now this? I'm only asking because of my heart. Then the first stage in the process which is overlocking both sides and the top and then what I did when I ironed it is I, I had a notch here which was three centimeters plus one centimeter and then I folded that over to start with pressed it down and then took a notch in here now I'm going to stitch these bits flat and then after that, I will stitch this bit flat. So yeah, that's the first step. So I'm gonna go and sew all of those. Okay, so I've sewn the first step, which looks like this. And now I am going to iron the inside down. I'm gonna turn it over and iron that down. The tops have now been pressed and stitched down. Now I've just been pinning my label when I sew down the side seams so those are all in place and I'm just gonna put good side to good side like so making sure I match up the top um, perfectly and then I'm just gonna stitch down the sides along the bottom and up the side okay I've now sewn the two pieces together and I also went and overlocked the sides and the bottom I know I'd already overlocked the sides, but I just quite like neatening it up and just having one overlock seam. I'm gonna turn this inside out now and press it and then we can work on the top bit. Turn them all the right way around and giving them a good press. And now I am going to cut the right length of tie that go that's going to go through the bag also this little tool here will literally change your life <laughs> it makes threading things through so quick and easy so i've looped the tape in the hole and then you just thread this end through here and then put it back and it just makes everything so easy and quick so I'm going to fold them together this way first and stitch down there and then I'll fold it back like this and stitch down there. 
and then on this side to match I will just do one stitch. So I hope that kind of made sense about how I just sewed that together. So it'd be nice to have some little drawstring bags to go with tote bags because I really like to use these in my handbags to just keep things separate like um, makeup or your purse and your keys and like your important bits that you need to grab quickly that can easily get lost. So that is how I make drawstring bags and tote bags. I built these with cushions for now just to show you guys what they look like. Um, but I hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments down below if you think you're going to try making a tote bag or a drawstring bag. Um, and yeah, I will link my website where they're going to be up. I'm not sure when I'm putting this video up, but probably going to put this video up after they've gone up on my website. I hope you guys are having a great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!